Tack så mycket. Thank you. Go to the start. I move up to the starting line of the 1500 meters. This is it. My first and final chance to show the world and myself what I have in store today in Vancouver on the 20th of February 2010. On my last Olympic Games and probably it's my first Olympic Games. And I ask myself a big question. I've worked for so long for this moment, but what if I fail? What if I become fourth or fifth? Will it have been worth it? That's what I ask myself. Ready? My whole life flashes before my eyes in a tenth of a second. When I was 20 years old, I entered the world of professional sports. And the world of professional sports is a world where winners are celebrated and losers are forgotten. And I have one big dream. I want to become Olympic champion. I am on my way to fulfill that promise when in 2002, the Olympics, the Winter Olympics of Salt Lake City loom up on the horizon. Media pressure is rising and everybody looks at me as I'm labeled the new star in speed skating. I sign a big contract and I let the whole world know what my goal is. Yes, I want to become Olympic champion. But I'm still living at home with my parents or going through a rough divorce. They fight each other and me being the eldest son, I try to intervene between these two people I love. But the harder I try, the worse it seems to get. As a reaction, I flee into the one thing I think I can control. I train harder, train harder, train harder. The solutions to my problems are to work harder, work harder, work harder. And the whole winter of 2002, I lie in my bed. I overtrained. I totally wore my body out. I'm not going to the Olympics. And I hear the voices around me. That's the end of his career. And that's probably not far from the truth. And I think this is strange. How can I fool myself like that? Instead of training harder or working harder, it seems smarter to reflect on life. And that's where Stoic philosophy captures me. It's a Greek philosophical school originated in 300 BC. And the Stoics are all about how you can keep standing upright in the storm of life. It comes in handy in nowadays world, I think. And I read a lot about one particular Stoic. His name was Marcus Aurelius. He lived in the second century AD and he was the most powerful man on earth, being a Roman emperor. And Marcus Aurelius uses his Stoic training to cultivate and maintain his character and to help him deal with adversity. And he has to deal with setbacks in his life, like I did. Well, he lost nine of his 13 children and his wife during his lifetime. He fought wars against Germanic tribes in the north and Parthians in the east. And he had to deal with, yes, <laughs> a pandemic that ravaged the Roman Empire. And I find a quote of Marcus Aurelius that he writes to himself, which inspires me. And that quote is, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. Marcus talks about dealing with setbacks, not as the end of the road, but as a challenge for you, for you to rise to the occasion and find your own direction in life around these challenges. And that's the stoic mindset I want to master. It helps me channel my inner drive. It helps me to be calmer. It helps me to be better. And I guess, yeah, well, that's a lifelong quest. I find myself sitting in a chair in the stands of an Olympic stadium. It's February 2006, and I watch as the 1500 meters of the Winter Olympics of Turin play out. But I'm not on the ice. Again, I missed out on an Olympic Games. I'm not skating the way I can, 
Something's holding me back from reaching my true potential, but what? I don't understand. And I find out that the last piece of the puzzle that is missing has got nothing to do with my work with speed skating. But the last piece of the puzzle that's missing has got everything to do with, well, the probably, probably the thing you will look at last and the thing that's hardest to change. And that is yourself. Instead of blaming others or finding excuses, I have to look at myself. My parents are still fighting each other in their divorce. And I blame my father for this. I feel a lot of anger towards him. Yeah, it's a human emotion we all feel sometimes, right? Yes? Yep. <laughs> I feel a lot of anger. And I haven't spoken to him, my father, for six years. It was my choice. I don't want any contact with him. But I know I must address this anger to find peace of mind, to lead a better life. And that's where another Stoic philosophy, philosopher comes to help. His name was Epictetus. Epictetus was born a slave in the first century AD. When he got his freedom, he became one of the most famous Stoic philosophers of his time. And Epictetus quotes it like this. It's not events that disturb people, but it's their judgment concerning them. What Epictetus talks about is we have events that happen to our lives and where you have emotions resulting from these events. But that's the wrong way of thinking, Epictetus says. There's something in between that event and that emotion. That is your judgment, your opinion, the lens through which you look at life, through which you give it meaning. And that is what you can change. And I find out that my anger has got nothing to do with my father, but comes from my judgment of him. I think he's a bad father. But the Stoics taught me to question that judgment. Am I a better father 20 years down the road? I still have to prove that. And do I know how it feels to miss out on contact with your three sons for six years? No, I don't. So instead of judging him, it seems wiser to try to understand him. I call it one of my stoic principles, and that is, if you judge less, you understand more. And the judgment, huh? the anger for me is a negative emotion. If you try to understand each other and let that negative emotion go, that's a much better and healthier life, I can guarantee you that. So I call my father up. We get to know each other again and my anger fades away. And my father is there with me and my two brothers cheering me on as I win Olympic gold in Vancouver. But like every sunny side, like every shiny side of a medal, there's also a shadow side. And that for me is my mother. My mother, who I love dearly, who held my hand when I first stood in the ice as a little boy. I had to call her up and make the toughest decision in my life. I had to ask her not to come to Vancouver. My mother was suffering from a severe depression. She took her own life in 2012, which is sad. But she couldn't handle the trip physically, mentally, emotionally. And I could not handle her being there. So there was somebody who had to make this difficult choice, and that was me. This choice came up to me. And it's still, by today, I think, the right choice to make. And I find out that the struggle I'm facing has got nothing to do with my parents. The struggle I'm facing has got nothing to do with becoming Olympic champion. The struggle I'm facing is a human struggle I still face and we all face. I want to live up to my potential. I want to grow. I want to learn. I want to form a deep and meaningful connection with other people. I want to embrace life with everything that it entails. Everything. So back to the question I started with. Is it worth it here today in Vancouver? 
And I can answer that question with, yes, it's worth it. All, the les all these lessons I learned made me who I am. And who I am now, that's good enough. That's good enough. And is it up to me what the results of this race will be? I don't know. Epictetus, Epictetus tells us, some things are up to us, some things are not up to us. Is it up to me what my competitors do or, or what people think of me? No, it's not. What's up to me, the Stoics would say, our internal state of mind, our mindset, our choices, our actions. Today, I can choose to sink my teeth in and never, ever let go. Ready? And if you think athletes right before the start enjoy themselves, <laughs> think again. <laughs> it's really scary. It's really scary. But you can counter fear with courage. I can be courageous. And being courageous doesn't mean you don't feel fear. Yes, you feel fear, but you still act. You give it all you have. That's the choice you can make. And that's the mindset I want to adopt. And that's from the muddy valleys of life to the top of Mount Olympus today, the journey I want to finish. I make my first strides and everything, everything comes together. Thank you.